It's a transgressional period between prehistory and the Middle Ages. Um, this is a Viking farm. It has never been here. We have built it up uh, after what we have excavated in Vorbasse, south in Jutland. And um, it's a rich man's farm. There were nine houses inside one fence, so it was a very rich family living like this. There's the long house where the rich farmer and his family were living. Um, there's the blacksmith's house where he was living with the family. And there's the forge where the blacksmiths were working. You can walk around, look in all the houses. Um, they're equipped with copies. Everything's a copies here. Also my dress and everything we've got here because then we can use it. Um, so you can, you can try different things with Viking tools and you can touch everything. It's the whole idea of this place, is that you touch the things to know, know about them, to have, know how to use them and so on. We have built it up, the farm here, though it wasn't here because um, one kilometer from here we have the fortress, the real thing, where Hera Bluetooth had his soldiers with families living and then you can compare because it's the same year, 980. You can compare how the soldiers were living with their families out there and how rich farmers were living here. And it was very rich farmers. 99% uh, of all the Vikings were farmers growing their crops on the field, having their gardens, having their animals. But it's the 1% um, who were traveling out, you have heard about before. 90% of all the people, they just stayed at home. They had to maintain their farmlands. Uh, this is here a farm. And you need lots and lots of people to run it. They can't go uh, viking uh, uh, every summer. They have to uh, sow and plant and harvest. Uh, and if only the eldest son uh, can um, inherit the farmstead, what should his younger brothers do? They are not, uh, they are not slaves. They could choose to work on their brother's farm or they have to find another occupation. Um, we have the possibility in the Middle Ages that you become um, a carpenter or whatever in a town. Uh, this is a transgressional period where towns start to develop out of trading posts. If you can't do this, you could become a soldier in another lord's uh, retinue. On the other hand, one could go Viking, uh, meaning yeah, sail the seas, to do whatever you can there. Uh, and this might be a combined trading or fighting action. Uh, uh, we have the term Viking, we have um, the term V or Wick, which uh, goes in place names. It's, it's a kind of inland site, a harbor site, a trading site. Viking ships were very fast. They could uh, take down their sails and come in nearly unseen by using the oars. And uh, then you could easily have a raid uh, and be gone before somebody has alarmed the local. It has a notion of being a pirate. Uh, they went to England, Ireland, probably northern Germany and France especially in the 9th century when these countries uh, had internal problems and couldn't muster uh, a sufficient defense. There is so much wealth accumulated there, you just want to have it. Then it is about connectivity, uh, that you take the chances, uh, see what uh, people otherwise uh, do and, and try to, to make things better at home. You may be able to to uh, come higher up in this society if you go raiding, if you go trading, if you leave your given place in your local village. So this is one of the uh, few chances you have. The other chances, of course, would be work harder. They could, uh, try to earn money to make uh, your better life. Those who take out to sea, they are seen a bit as heroes. Okay. If we consider the individual, shall I go or shall I stay, it's still a hard decision. Because it is extremely dangerous to take to the seas, to go raiding. Many of them didn't come back. So you have to persuade all the guys 
uh, in a certain uh, area. Uh, come with me, join my crew, sign under in the Navy. Uh, we want to raid England. Uh, you will get rich, you will get wealthy, you will get honored. If you die, you get into a paradise or uh, into Valhall. So you can't lose everything, young man. Come on, join my crew. They might have taken the Christian paradise yeah. idea yeah. and uh, have transferred it to the heaven Valhalla. Uh, mm. Valhalla means war hall. Also there we have this uh, Odin who, who collects warriors and they're feasting uh, all day. So this is the, the story they tell. So, dear warrior, get into war, get yourself killed, you will just have it better in the afterlife. Many left the country to, to go raiding, colonizing, exploring. And so this is in the 10th century or even the 11th century, they become armies. We have the bearded axe here uh, of the Vikings. His name is the bearded axe because it has a beard like me. Um, <laughs> one of the reasons we have bearded axe because iron in the Viking Age is uh, very expensive. So one of the ways we can make it cheaper on is we let go of some of the iron. Um, in the Viking Age this year will probably have been sharp and pointy so I can poke uh, or I can hook someone uh, in the shoulder. Uh, and in the meat, and I can then hook them into my own uh, shield wall behind the shield wall, uh, and in that way, um, yeah, my friends in the shield wall can then take the sacks or the sword and then give them a warm welcome behind the shield wall. So, with the sh uh, short, yeah, hitting error is when I hit someone on the armor, um, maybe I will not cut through the armor if it's a chainmail or if it's a vams or the slaukoft in Danish, uh, but I will still break the, break the bones underneath it. So, the most popular and cheapest weapon of the Viking Age. Then we have the sword. The sword is was very expensive uh, because it was take a look at a long time to, to craft and you need a specialist. The thing is with the sword, it needs to be soft. Uh, if it's not soft, it can break uh, when you yeah, use it. So, some of the blacksmiths in the Viking Age then found out we can have a soft piece of steel in the middle and then hard steel on the edges. So uh, then the, uh, the middle of the sword then will be able to uh, make the sword able to bend and uh, the hard steel will ma uh, make sure that the uh, steel, uh, the sword will keep the, its sharpness. Therefore, it took a long time, oh, it was very expensive because if you look at the blacksmith we have here on Furicat, it's not, uh, th that black blacksmith here is not able to make swords, it's too short. Uh, you need more air in it so we can harden, uh, well, heat it, uh, the whole steel at the same time, uh, so when it, 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 it gets hardened, it will be hardened equally. This year is a one-handed spear, then we have a two-handed spear here. This year, uh, one-handed, you can have a shield as well. And this year is a lot, ho lot, a lot harder to control uh, with one hand, so this year is more bent, uh, used for behind uh, the shield wall, then I can poke down the enemy. Then we have uh, the Dane Axe. The Dane Axe is an elite weapon, uh, you need to know what, you, uh, what you're uh, doing, but with this weapon, if you don't, you'll get killed. The reason is, you have absolutely no way to parry with this weapon. So what you do is, you learn to nearly juggle with the, with the axe, if you're alone, uh, against enemies, and you'll nearly juggle with it in different patterns. Uh, hopefully in a pattern that the enemy will not be able to, uh, to read. Um, it's also very good in a shielded wall. The thing is, when you have a shield wall, you are prepared uh, for a pressure to go towards you. So let's say you, you pressure uh, into the, you push into the enemy. You're not prepared for something coming behind you and then push into you. So if you then have a Dane Axe Warrior then stand behind and then pull it in, then the shield wall opens, you, your shield wall opens and then you pull uh, three or four enemies in and then you close the shield wall again and then you have all the men behind you and then stab them down with, the, um, with the, their weapons. The thing is with the shield, you have a center grip on it. The good thing with the center grip is it's it's bendy. I can fast move uh, if I need to uh, protect myself over here or here. Um, I can move up and down as well. The good thing with the shield, I can also use it as a, as a weapon. I can pass with the shield uh, in the edge. 
it will probably not kill a man, but it will definitely uh, disorientate, uh, disorientate him, so he will not be able to fight me for uh, a couple of minutes. I can also bash him with the shield, uh, yeah, bubble in here, in the middle, and bash him. But the shield is around 50, 10 to 15 kilograms in the Viking gear, so this use very light shields uh, for safety when we fight with them. Hello, my name is Christian, I'm 27 years old and I'm a member of the ESK Viking Combat Group. The uh, ESK Combat Group is the oldest combat group in the entire of Europe, founded in 1992. What we do is that we have an extraordinary community of people that fight, sing and drink together and have extreme, extreme amounts of fun on the battlefield and in the longhouse as well. We do Viking reenactment in all its aspects from cooking, campsite living, singing in the evening to battle in the morning and training all day. Many people, I think, they, they see it more as a sport than reconstruction of Viking fighting. Therefore, their weapons are not necessarily reconstructions of Viking findings. Right, so this is our weapons container and it holds all the equipment that we use in our everyday training and also on the battlefield. It contains, well, mainly our weapons. Everything from hand axes, such as these, made in wood and metal, to uh, one-handed spears, like these, which people also use. They have a safety tip on, but we'll talk on that later. And we also have all of our longer two-handed weapons, two-handed spears. And, of course, it also includes the Mighty Dane Axe, which is also a two-handed weapon. And, of course, people have all their personal shields in different sizes according to how you're how you build, how tall you are, how broad your shoulders are. And people build them themselves um, when they start as a trial member. So everybody has got their own set of Viking combat gear. And it's up to you to decide which kind of weapon constellation you want to fight with. If you want to fight with one hand spear and shield, or you want to fight with a two hand spear, this is my um, preferred weapon. Um, or if you want to go for, for with the Danax instead. This is where we keep all of our equipment and also camp equipment such as tents or um, kitchen equipment and all those sorts of things that you use in your everyday life when you're, when you're out touring, uh, touring bike. But what we do here is more of a sort of sport than it's reconstruction of the fight. Because the reconstruction of the fight would include the head as a target zone, our feet, our hands, everything that you could hit. Whereas this is a modern way of doing bike in combat. That means we have some safety issues that we need to, to attend. One of them being all the weapons are blunt, so that means they're not sharp. All the spears are not pointed, they have a safety tip welded onto them so uh, to ensure they don't do any damage. We have several different uh, rule systems that we can fight within, well, the most popular being the Western, uh, Western style fighting, where all, all cutting weapons like axes, swords, Dane axes, their target zone is the entire upper body, not including the arm, to within the t-shirt line, entire upper body, the stomach, uh, the bottom and the groin as well. Um, and down to the legs, the upper thighs, not including the knees. Mm. So if you're hit within that zone, it doesn't matter how hard you hit. As long as you just hit, it's enough, then you're out. Its fighting style are not the same as the Vikings would have made. Yeah, we talked about the ship being too small because it only has to protect my, my target zone, which means that that, that allows my way of fighting to be in, in a different way than the Vikings do that. Because I don't have to protect my head, I don't have to protect my lower legs, 
my hands or my arms. It's important to protect that in, in, in Viking Age because if you're if you show your hand and you get, you get hit, you're, you're done. You have a, a, a rule of thumb that says metal kills. And that is to avoid all of these discussion that we have, whether it, regarding if it was the lip tip or the edge or the side, because we're moving at such a fast pace that it's very hard for people to to figure out which kind of which side of the weapons that you were hit with. So in order to to uh, to get rid of that, the rule of thumb is metal kills. And that means if you get hit within the target zone with a piece of metal, either yeah, either quite softly or hard with the flat side. You get stabbed, whatever, metal kills. And it's only one hit. And that's for the sake of the playability of this game that we have. A very important point in this uh, way of fighting is that there is no judge. We are each other's opponents, but we are also the judges of each other. Not in that way that if you hit me, and you think you hit me within the target zone, then you get to call me dead. No, I, I will respect you enough that if you hit me within the target zone, I'll say yes, you got me. And the other way around. It's a lot about the, the, the trust regarding each other, because we are pointing blank weapons at each other, and I trust people not to hit me in the head. That's why I don't, I don't, I don't wear any more safety gears on this. Because I trust people that they have enough training and enough control and talent to not hit me in the face. And of course I'll do the same. The essential of the line fight is that you have two teams that line up in front of another and then this team will of course try to kill this team and the other way around. Depending on who you're fighting, what terrain and what phase we are in the, in the, in the, in the battle, you'll have to adjust that all the time to your own force of strength and your enforcement or potential enforcement. Mm. It's a really, it's a huge game when you, when you see it from this perspective. It's actually a, a funny thing that, this, that draws all kind of people together. And myself, I'm a chemical engineer. Mm. I've got a master's degree in uh, polymerization of uh, epoxy composites. It has nothing to do with the Viking Age, nothing at all. I just really like the, um, the historical aspect of it and the sport and the intensity of the fight. Whereas others are dragged in from either their studies as archaeologists or something else uh, entirely. Being honest and together and realizing that the essential of what we're doing is having fun.